qualifying for the Singapore Grand Prix is over and shockingly both Red Bulls were knocked out in Q2 and in this video I'm going to be doing a data analysis from what we saw in qualifying in what had to be the most shocking and unpredictable session of the year. Now, let's get to the video. As usual, I'll be talking about McLaren, Aston Martin, Ferrari, Mercedes and what happened to Red Bull later on, so stick around for that. Qualifying at Singapore, as I mentioned, threw up one of the most shocking sessions of the season. And as usual, qualifying on a street circuit means that track evolution was a huge factor. And to show this, I have Carlos Sainz pace from the start of Q1 until the end of Q3. Along with this, I've brought up the fastest lap of Sainz from Q1 and Q3 to show the difference as the circuit grip came more and more to the drivers and also they increased their confidence. And what does this comparison show us? Well, what it shows us is just how track evolution works. When you look at the two traces, you can see that on the final run of Q3 versus Q1, you can see that Sainz can carry more minimum apex speed, which shows that he is pushing harder and the car is more accepting of being pushed harder into corners. Alongside this, Sainz is able to get onto full power sooner in Q3 as well versus Q1, and on top of this, that means he can get to top speed faster. This would be because the amount of traction he can get on the exit of corners has improved, meaning that he can get to full throttle sooner. Because of all of this, we were able to see that from the end of Q1 to the end of Q3, his lap times have improved by over 1.4 seconds. This track evolution meant that drivers had to be on track at the right time, especially at the end of Q1. But the question is what teams look good and what teams did not look so good tonight. Well, one team that did not look really strong was the Alfa Romeo team. On Friday, things were looking pretty good, at least for Valtteri Bottas, as he had a good FP1 and FP2. However, in FP3, Alfa Romeo were at the bottom of the pack along with Williams. And in qualifying, Alfa Romeo were the only team to have both drivers out in the first part of qualifying. But how did this happen? Well, I've brought up the times of Bottas and Albon from Q1, where Bottas was beaten by 0.2 seconds, which meant that Albon was able to get through to Q2, but Bottas was out. When we compare the two times, the question is, what can we see? Well, what we see is rather surprising. Through Sector 1 and Sector 2, Bottas is actually up on Albon, and right now, things are looking pretty good. Through the twisty section over the Anderson Bridge, Bottas was actually over three tenths ahead of Albon. However, from this point onwards, the straight line speed of the Williams comes into play as Albon gains back all the time lost and the damage is truly done going into the last corner as Albon carried a lot more speed and was later on the brakes. This was the moment where Bottas lost those last two tenths of a second and Bottas therefore was eliminated, but Albon made it through. For Alfa Romeo, this is going to be a very tricky race for them, as it seems like the pace is just lacking for them. And they're going to lose out, I think, with Alfa Tauri looking strong and Haas also qualifying well. Speaking of Haas, they had a fantastic day as Kevin Magnussen lines up 6 on the grid and Nico Hulkenberg is in ninth place. Kevin is a bit of a Singapore specialist as he holds the current race lap record from the 2018 Grand Prix. And this weekend, Magnussen has been in brilliant form when you compare the fastest lap of K-Mag, who was 6th, to Ocon in 8th place. You can really see where Haas and Magnussen was able to make up the time. Firstly, the Haas has slightly better top speed overall when compared to the Alpine car, which is something that we have seen a fair bit of this year, as the Haas car is pretty slippery in a straight line. Going through the first couple of corners, Magnussen makes up a lot of time, as he flings the car into the first couple of corners. However, as the lap starts to unfold, it seems like Ocon in the Alpine starts to claw back the time that he lost. However, over the Anderson Bridge, Magnussen is more committed and retakes a pace advantage. And from there, it is pretty much over. Kevin, as mentioned, is a bit of a specialist when it comes to this circuit, and his performance has been brilliant all weekend long. The race for Hassel will be very difficult, and I fear that whilst qualifying was very strong, they will not be the strongest midfield team when it comes to the race, and instead they will still be beaten by Alpine, simply because the Haas has typically slow race pace and are hard on their tyres. 
I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. I'm on my way to 5k subs and I would really appreciate it if you help me get there. Now though, let's get back to the video and let's talk about the top 5 teams and let's start with the McLaren team. For McLaren, today was a massive mixed bag. On the one hand, Lando Norris is lining up 4th on the grid. However, Oscar Piastri is starting the race all the way down, at least right now, in 17th place. However, this has nothing to do with the upgrades being only on Lando Norris's car, and more to do with the unfortunate timing of Lance Stroll's crash. For Lando though, how did he miss out on pole position? Well, let's take a look and compare the times of Lando Norris to the Ferrari of Carlos Sainz. For Lando, a lot of his pace actually comes from the exits of corners as McLaren gets brilliant drive out of corners. And this is why you tend to see the delta time slowly decrease on the exit of corners. Sainz, however, is stronger going into a lot of the corners and the Ferrari of Sainz was especially committed through sector three and through those last couple of corners. This is where Lando maybe could have been a little bit stronger. For McLaren though, this was a good session. The question is though, how will the upgraded car be over a stint? McLaren have been a little bit harder on their tyres than most of the front runners, except maybe Ferrari at times. Maybe though, the upgraded car can help to mitigate some of these issues. If this is the case, then it could be possible that McLaren find themselves back on the podium, especially with Red Bull seemingly being out of contention this weekend. For Aston Martin, firstly, it is good to see that Stroll is okay after his mammoth incident, which saw his qualifying come to an early finish. This, however, is maybe yet another indication that if Aston Martin really wants to be a front-running team, they need to start to look elsewhere for a second driver. Stroll has been off the pace all weekend compared to Alonso. For Fernando, however, qualifying today was only alright but he will be disappointed to be lining up 7th on the grid. Let's see though where Alonso lost the time as we compare the times of Fernando Alonso to Carlos Sainz who of course was on pole position. When you compare the times you can look at the delta and you can see that Aston Martin are really just losing out in every single area. Down the straights Alonso doesn't have the top speed of Sainz and he cannot get to full throttle at the same rate as Sainz. Also, Sainz has better pace through the tight and twisty section. The Aston Martin has gone backwards and seem to be struggling for pace over one lap. They are so far missing out in all areas. Going into the race though, Alonso will be hoping that the Aston Martin can have superior tyre wear compared to the competition ahead of him. And if he does have that, then he could make his way up through a couple of places. However, it does seem like it will be a little bit too much of an uphill battle if Alonso wants to find himself on the podium. For Ferrari, this was almost a perfect qualifying session as Carlos Sainz once again lines up on pole position. However, next to him on the front row will not be Charles Leclerc. Even though Leclerc was less than a tenth of a second behind Carlos, which once again goes to show just how tight things were in today's qualifying session. Let's now though compare the times of Leclerc to Sainz as the two actually got to very similar lap times in different ways. Going into the first couple of corners you can see here that Sainz is able to carry a lot more speed and instantly gains a couple of tenths over Charles. However going into the old Singapore sling section and over the Anderson Bridge, Charles is actually faster. From this point it looks like Charles Leclerc has the edge over Sainz However, like we saw with the McLaren comparison, Sainz is just mighty in the last sector as it looks like he saved his tyres to have just enough grip to fly through the final couple of corners, which is what secured him pole position. For Ferrari, this is by far the best opportunity all year for them to win a Grand Prix. However, they will need to be mindful of tyre wear especially as Mercedes have an extra set of mediums which could come in handy and typically Mercedes are stronger than Ferrari in race trim. Speaking of Mercedes, at least for George Russell, today was almost incredible as he is lining up on the front row alongside Carlos Sainz as Russell was less than a tenth of a second behind Sainz. Hamilton is starting the race in fifth place and he feels a little bit less comfortable with the car when compared to Russell. Let's now though compare the times of Russell to Sainz to see where that difference was. 
The Mercedes was lacking top speed when compared to the Ferrari this weekend, and you can see that down pretty much every single straight. For Russell, similarly to Leclerc, the lap time starts to come back to him over the Singapore Sling section and over the Anderson Bridge. This could again be down to Sainz saving a little bit to fully unleash the car in the last couple of corners, which again is where Russell loses out. Mercedes will be going into this race though confident that they can fight for victory at least with George Russell. Typically Ferrari are harder on their tyres and if for some reason Singapore this year is a two stop then Mercedes will have the edge with an additional fresh set of medium compound tyres. Either way this fight between Mercedes and Ferrari will be very exciting because on Friday, it looked very close between the two teams. Finally for Red Bull, qualifying was a complete disaster of a day as neither Red Bull driver looked comfortable on track and shockingly Verstappen and Perez were both knocked out in Q2 and they were beaten by Liam Lawson in the Alpha Tauri. Perez spun in Q2 on his final run and Verstappen just lacked pace and rear traction. When you compare the Q2 laps of Sainz and Verstappen, you can see where Verstappen just struggled. On the exit of corners and getting back onto power, you can see Verstappen is struggling for traction, which is kind of wild given how Red Bull have been for the rest of the season very strong on the exits of corners. Verstappen was slower pretty much everywhere, except the last two corners, which is when he threw the Red Bull into the corners, and thankful for him, he managed to make it stick. For the race tomorrow, I'm just not sure what to expect from them. On Friday, the long run suggested that they can have a good race, as they had good pace, but they will have to make their way through the traffic, and the field will not be easy at Singapore to overtake. Also, there is that question mark about what is going to happen, at least as of right now as I'm recording this video, with Verstappen and potential grid penalties. So, with that in mind then, what are my top 5 predictions for the Grand Prix in Singapore? In P5, I'm actually going to go with Fernando Alonso and the Aston Martin. P4 will be Lando Norris in the McLaren. P3 will be Charles Leclerc. Carlos Sainz will finish in P2. And I do think George Russell will win the Singapore Grand Prix if he gets off the line well. But those are my thoughts. The question is though, what are your predictions for the race? Down below in the comments let me know. And as always, comment, leave a like and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.